Hello and welcome to the online certification course on microelectronics devices to circuits. In our previous module, we have learnt uh, the second order effects which are prevalent in a bipolar junction transistor. What are these second order effects? These are those effects which normally do not uh, show their presence, but under certain conditions of electrical parameters or structural parameters, uh, their effects are pronounced and uh, their effects are relatively seen uh, or influence the electrical characteristics of the device. Uh, one of the phenomena which we looked closely was basically your the concept of uh, uh, base width modulation effect also known as early effect and associated with that we found out a voltage known as early voltage. Uh, this makes the early effect phenomena makes the device behave as a non ideal current source in the saturation region or in the active region as we say. And uh, uh, we have also seen that uh, uh, that uh, there is a multiplication of charge carriers under effectively large reverse bias uh, near the depletion region, uh, which results in a large change in the in the in the value of your uh, uh, collector current. Uh, we will start from where we have left in the previous turn and see what the other second order effects are and uh, also look into the cross section typical cross section of a bipolar transistor and then we will recapitulate uh, uh, this whole uh, discussion. So, typically we would expect to see that this will be the last uh, sort of a uh, presentation on bipolar technology after this we will move to CMOS technology because that will be the next uh, structural C we will see that. So, as we, as we left in the previous discussion, uh, we the collector current I c uh, was equals to given as alpha n times I e, where I c e, I c o is basically my reverse bias uh, uh, sort of a minority current carrier concentration. So, this is basically minority carrier concentration right. And uh, what we are predicting is that the total collector current which is flowing through a circuitry will always be a sum of the majority current carrier contribution plus the minority carrier contribution. And this factor m is given by this term which is 1 by 1 minus b c base collector junction and uh, base collector junction with a capital B uh, to the power n where n is a basically a, uh, an integer value. Now, depending on the value of m which is basically a positive integer, we would expect to see i c to be large or small. right? Uh, we also see the fact that uh, there is a contribution this is basically your majority carrier contribution right. This is a majority carrier contribution and this is primarily the minority carrier contribution minority right. Now, please understand that with rise in temperature you would expect to see minority carrier contribution almost double for every 10 degree rise in temperature right or approximately 5 to 10 degree rise in temperature which means that the collector current doubles itself. Uh, due to minority current carriers if you raise the temperature. We will come to that when we discuss other effects in our subsequent slides. Uh, we have also considered for the time being that alpha and beta which is basically your current gain in common emitter and common base configurations. Uh, these are primarily independent of uh, independent of temperature in reality not true and that is for second second uh, issue is coming into picture. Then what is the effect of thermal effect? So, what is the thermal effect primarily means that please understand this BJT is working in an environment where applied voltages are very large. Not only that your collector currents are the order also order of, order of millivolts. So, if your collector current is the order of millivolts milliampere sorry then I square into R which is basically the power dissipation which you expect to see from a device is typically very high right. As a result the on chip temperature for a bipolar technology based silicon uh, design will be relatively high. So, we cannot neglect the effects of thermal variations or effects of thermal changes onto the device characteristics. And till now uh, we were assuming that alpha and beta were independent of temperature, but now we will see that the alpha and beta are depending on the value of temperature not only that they also uh, depend on the magnitude of I e and I c right. We have all this we have already seen right. Now, at very low levels of injection what does it mean low level of injection primarily means that when your bias is so small that even in an NPN transistor if the number of electrons being injected onto the base side is relatively very small then we define that to be as a 
very low level of injection right. Now, the assumption uh, of negligible recombination in the in the depletion region is invalid. I will explain to you what does it mean. It means that that let us suppose uh, you were injecting uh, you were injecting let us suppose uh, in one case when, when it is low level of injection you are injecting say 10 carriers right 10 electrons are being injected onto the base site right whereas for a large injection we will have let us suppose 10 to the power 5 electrons being injected so if it is a 10 electron then with respect to 10 even if there are two holes in the base side which is recombining recombining right you still have a 20% right a recombination fine whereas if you have 10 to the power 5 electrons being inserted and you only have to only have uh, two like two holes being combining you can understand the negligibly uh, small percentage of recombination or almost 0% of uh, recombination that's what it is written here the assumption of negligible recombination in the junction depletion region is invalid and the reason is that uh, we cannot assume that the recombination current is very very low right it will be very very high as compared to your base injection current and that is what is an important uh, 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 important issue. Now, <coughs> uh, we have also seen that this we have not discussed earlier, but we will make it we will discuss this this point which you see this point if you see very carefully that the base conductivity modulation effect results in a decrease in the value of gamma which is emitter injection efficiency. What does it mean that uh, I will explain to you what does it mean. It means that let us suppose you did have a base width modulation which means that you forward bias to your base emitter and you reverse bias your base collector and you go on increasing the reverse bias of the base collector. As a result the effective base width is uh, base width is, uh, is decreasing. Now, when once it is decreasing which, which, which means that the effective number of holes available is actually getting reduced and therefore, uh, its probability of recombination with electrons is also getting reduced right. So, what we have learned from this is that if the base conductivity um, is there it will reduce the it will reduce or decrease the uh, emitter injection efficiency which means that it reduces the efficiency by which the emitter will be able to inject its carrier onto the base side. Because if it is very small, all the electrons will not be combining with holes. As a result, uh, the base, the emitter efficiency reduces. Now, we are 100% sure that when when you are doing common emitter configuration, for example, your collector currents are very very high, right? Right, and they are very 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 high in the sense that they are typically very high. And as a result, there will be significant power dissipation uh, in a, in a, in, a, in the transistor, right? and therefore, as a result there will be self heating of the device itself. The reason is that so large I c, so I c square I c square into r which is basically my power dissipation this will be typically very high because your I c's are very very high or current currents are very very high and you see it is basically almost like a parabolic increase in the power dissipation. So, even if you double your current current you are actually making the power dissipation increase by 4 times which is quite large uh, uh, power dissipation. Now, uh, I will just give you an idea about what is known as thermal runaway right basic thermal runaway, concept of basic thermal runaway. So, we will discuss one basic concept which is known as thermal run away. Now, you see uh, that suppose you have a common emitter based configuration uh, emitter grounded configuration with emitter bias here and you had a base collector junction here and you had a RC here and RB and RE right and then you appropriately bias it with VCC this is with VBB and so on and so forth right and in the NPN transistor this was your V out. Now, you see you in this case your IC will be uh, IC will be given as uh, can be given as VCC uh, minus. So, if you solve it from this end to this end I get uh, if assuming that IE is the current. So, VCC will be equals to ICRC right plus V C E which is V C E this is V C E right V C E plus I E R E right. Assuming that the base current is very small I can assume simply that I C is approximately equals to I E and therefore, I can write down V C C minus V C E divided by R C plus R E is effectively equals to I C right approximately equals to I C. V C E is typically 0.2 or 0.3 this will be around 
3 volts, so 3 minus 0.2 divided by few kilo ohms, some, some kilo ohms. So, this will be of the order of few milliamps, right. So, it will order of few milliamps, got the kind. Now, what happens is that this I square, I C square into R, R, R C will result in power dissipation across this resistance. So, there will be a power dissip dissipating, right. As a result, this transistor will start get heated away, right, and there will be heating. So, what is also known as self heating, we will explain to you what is self heating is. So, as the temperature rises, please understand that my, by my previous discussion just now, uh, my minority current carriers almost doubles for every 10 degree rise in temperature for minority, not for majority, please understand. For minority carrier doubles for every, every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature, right. So, if a temperature, so, so you have increase in power dissipation, which results in increase in temperature this results, this increase in temperature results in increase in minority carriers. Now, I C overall current will be made up of I C majority plus I C O or I C O minority. Now, though this is constant, but this every times doubles itself, which primarily means that your I C will again increase with temperature. As I C increases, I C square into R C will also increase. So, more heating effect, more temperature and more I C 0. So, this is known as so a time will come when I C will be so large that it will destroy the B J T itself. So, there will this phenomena is known as thermal runaway, right. So, this phenomena uh, is known as basically known as uh, known as thermal thermal runaway. So, this is thermal runaway or self heating uh, issues, right. And therefore, this thermal runaway uh, re, re, gives you a, a large amount. Uh, so, so in, in the devices designed for high power application, the transistor is mounted on an efficient heat sink for, for the reason I just not discussed with you, so that the thermal energy can be transferred away from the junction, right. So, as long as you are able to shift the thermal energy away from the base collector or base emitter junction, uh, we would expect to see no rise in the minority current carriers because of temperature, because you are able to shift the important or the major part of our uh, power dissipation or temperature rise away from that. So, if you have a heat sink which is working as a very good heat sink that will help you to remove the power uh, very fast uh, away from the from the emitter base junction. This is what I was saying that if you allow therefore, if the temperature of the device is allowed to increase due to power dissipation or thermal environment the transistor parameter changes. So, your alpha and beta are a function of therefore temperature, right, and current gain increases. Uh, as we discussed, we will not go into details of it, but the most important parameters are carrier lifetime and diffusion coefficients. Uh, also, we have seen that as the temperature increases, the mobility actually falls down, right, and because this is very simple that as the temperature increases, the lattice itself starts to move across its mean position, right, because of high thermal energy. As a result, electron traveling across the lattice gets scattered by collision uh, with these lattice, lattice atoms. As a result, the mobility falls down. So, higher the temperature, the mobility starts to fall down, and uh, and, and and this this results in a lower mobility. And therefore, when you talk of drift, drift, uh, your drift will be equals to so velocity of the carriers will be mu into e. So, as a result, when mu falls down, velocity falls down, and therefore the current is reduced drastically, right? Uh, the diffusion coefficient of holes and electrons also decrease as the temperature increases, thereby causing a drop in beta due to increasing transit time. I think I think I'll make it clear to you what do I mean by what do I mean to say by that. It means that as you as your temperature rises, right, uh, the diffusion coefficients actually starts to fall down. So when when that happens, uh, you you have because because it it, it primarily means that. D, see d by mu is constant Einstein's relation. So, when d starts to drop down mu also has to go down to make this ratio constant. So, when mobility drops down it increases the transit time right. When it increases the transit time the beta actually starts to reduce the beta is basically the current gain. Why current gain starts to reduce because now since the transit time is lowered then within the same amount of time lesser amount will be charge uh, charge will be transferring from emitter to base. So, your overall current current will reduce and therefore, your gain will reduce right. And therefore, um, and that is the reason why you have a reduction uh, due to increasing transit time uh, as the temperature increases right. And this is one of the problem areas which people face uh, in this thing. Now, thermal runaway is a standard problem area and if circuit is not designed properly, 
you will have a thermal runaway which will which will make the device uh, non functional and will burn up uh, within a very short period of time. Uh, as I discussed with you runaway of the collector current can be due to overheating and the destruction of the destruction of the uh, device right and this is what leads to final destruction. Let me get to the third uh, second order effect and that is base resistance emitter emitter uh, crowding. Uh, <coughs> Now, what happens is that we are assuming that the cross sectional area of the NPN transistor emitter base and base collector junctions are relatively small right. And therefore, the flux of electric field is almost constant across that emitter base or base collector junction right. That is true even if you have very small junction areas uh, uh, there. But if the junction areas are relatively large keep typically very large then you do have a non uniform current density which means that the flux lines are not uniform across the interface right. We will not get into details of why is it like that, but that is the reality you do not get it and therefore, the current is not equal across the interface uh, through the uh, through the base layer uh, base layer. This is basically known as uh, base resistance or base resistance increases in that case right. So, these are the three major uh, second order effects or second order phenomena uh, which people have seen across the board and it is it, it's, it's, its its uh, its removal is quite very very it's quite important uh, early voltage or uh, base width modulation effect can be removed by using the doping concentration on the base side uh, much much high, uh, relatively higher as compared to collector this is one thing the second thing is uh, how do you actually go for thermal runaway removal well there are standard stabilization techniques by which we can actually have circuit level manipulations to reduce the thermal runaway or almost remove the thermal runaway. And for the base splitting and emitter following we require to make the emitter base junction and base collector junction uh, area cross sectional area as small as possible. Now, let me just finish off this uh, bipolar transistor lecture by giving you an effective cross section of a bipolar device. Uh, this is your uh, um, uh, this is your emitter base junction if you look very carefully it is base emitter and this is also your. So, this is a collector this is your base. So, you have got two bases connected back to back. So, this is one base and therefore, emitter base emitter base collector and emitter base collector. So, you have got two transistors in series sort of and the layout looks something like this and this right. So, we will not go further detail than this it, it is available in standard textbooks for understanding purposes and gives you a detailed analysis about uh, the BJT uh, as such right. We therefore, recapitulate uh, the bipolar technology in a detailed manner which we have already seen. Uh, we have seen therefore, that the bipolar technology can be used as an inverter uh, to make it saturation to go to saturation and cut off. Second order second order affects the performance of the behavior of the device right and it degrades the behavior of the device it degrades it right. Uh, base region is always lightly doped uh, carrier mobility decreases with increase in temperature we have seen that. Uh, we as we discussed earlier that in order to remove thermal runaway designer has to use heat sink and proper heat sink design is an important one. And structural effects are important to determine the operation of the device which structural effects primarily mean how uh, what is the cross sectional area of the base emitter and base collector junction right and these are important. So, this takes care of our understanding of typically uh, 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 the first part of our of, of the lecture series. And this was still bipolar transistor we will and it takes care of basic understanding of bipolar, the parameters of bipolar transistor, various configurations of bipolar transistor, how do you calculate current and therefore, what are the second order effects prevalent in a bipolar transistor and that has been discussed in these set of modules. In the next module or the next lecture we will be going through or going ahead with a CMOS technology or a MOSFET technology right. With these words let me thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you.